Thank you, Your Honor. Good afternoon, Corporal. Good afternoon, Mr. Yeah. Bowles. So, uh, in your direct testimony, do I understand that you said you did not do the prop truck warrant until the 27th because, and, and I'm still going, because you did not have information from Ms. Gutierrez Reed about the prop truck? Uh, if that's the statement that I made. Okay, so you stated under oath <laughs> just a little bit ago that the delay in the prop truck search warrant from the 21st to the 27th was because you didn't have information about the prop truck from Ms. Gutierrez Reed, correct? So I wasn't even the case agent at that time. Okay, that wasn't my question. My question was, you just stated earlier in your testimony that you didn't have information about the prop truck from Ms. Gutierrez Reed, correct? Maybe if that's what I said. Okay. Then I want to show you what I'm going to mark for identification as defendants O. And may I approach, Your Honor? Corporal, I'm going to show you what um, is marked as defendants O and ask you if you could review that and see if you identify it. So your highlighted portion? Uh, just the, the document itself. Can okay. You, do you, you know what that is? Yes. What is that? So this is um, the search warrant that I wrote um, on October 27th to search the prop truck. Your Honor, I'd move admission of defendants O. Um, I would have an obvious objection to uh, pages and pages of inadmissible hearsay. Would you like to approach? Or? Yes. So, Corporal, do you recall that you were the affiant for a search warrant for that prop truck? Yes. And, and when I say affiant, I mean that you swore under oath to the judge to get this search warrant that these statements you made were true, correct? Yes. Now, do you recall making a statement to this judge to get a search warrant for the prop truck that due to the information received from Hannah, Affiant would like approval of a search warrant for the prop truck on scene due to the statement received about firearms and ammunition being stored in the truck. Do you remember making that statement? Yes. Okay. Do you also remember making the statement to the judge uh, that after conducting an interview with Hannah Gutierrez Reed, she advised on the day of the incident that the crew broke for lunch? Firearms were taken back and secured inside a safe on a prop truck. Recall making that statement? Yes. So this statement under oath, don't you agree with me that it conflicts with your statement you just made under oath in testimony? In what way? You told this jury earlier that you did not have information from Ms. Gutierrez Reed about the prop truck. That's why there was a delay in doing this search warrant. But in fact, you told the judge you did have information from Ms. Gutierrez Reed, didn't you? Yes, I did. So you're asking this jury to believe you today. Which of these statements were true? This statement or the one you told them just earlier in court? Uh, I, I guess I did get a statement from her that stuff was stored on the prop truck. Okay, will you agree with me then that the testimony you just gave under oath a little while ago was not true? I'm sorry, I don't remember exactly what I said. Okay. You also stated that the... You also made a statement that Ms. Gutierrez Reed had unloaded that firearm, the Baldwin revolver, over the prop cart. You recall that statement? Yes. And in fact, 
You made that statement numerous times, as I recall. Do you recall making it at least once? Yes, because that's what she had said in her first interview. Can you point out to me, and I'm all ears if you can, because I didn't hear it. Can you point out the timestamp where she said that about loading it over the prop card? Uh, I don't have the timestamp. Okay. If Do you recall Ms. Gutierrez-Reed's exact words in that first interview about unloading that gun? Verbatim, no. Okay. If I played you a clip, would it refresh your memory? Yes. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm happy to look at what he's showing, but I also think probably the better and more complete way of handling this is to review the transcript, and I think we have numerous copies of that. So I, I mean, I'm not going to tell Mr. Bowles how to do his job, so show me what you're going to show her. Well, I'm refreshing recollection. I know, but uh, you sure. show Sure, and you show me what you're going to refresh with. This is a clip, and so if you want to play the actual video that was entered, you can do that too. Well, you have it. It's, yeah. they, she's your witness now. You do what you want to do. Okay, if you don't want to help us out, is that what you're saying? You don't want to play? Mr. Bowles, yeah, you I'll have play. it. You have computers. She's your witness. Okay, then I'll play. Your Honor, Chad's better at operating. I still don't know what he's going to play. Okay. I, okay. All right. Wait, okay. I, I have no wait, idea what wait, he's wait, doing. Yeah, I'm wait, just wait, wait, you're not listening to me. Um, what are you showing her? I'm playing her a clip of that video that was entered into evidence. Which one? The, the first, first one? The first one. So the I think first what? clip? I think Which this, took 50 minutes? But it's just a short clip. It's like 20 seconds. So he needs to show it to me. Can we just step in the yeah. uh, right and then, outside? And the then you don't want the jury to hear it again because you're refreshing her record, her memory. Not, it's a, not it's already, judge. It's entered into evidence. That's they not. That is. That's not true. You're refreshing her memory. No, but I could play it as if it's in, it's in evidence for, um, already. So then play the exhibit. They've heard it.
Okay, Corporal, while we were kind of dealing with that, um, I want to come back to that question on the prop cart loading. And again, I'm because Miss um, Gutierrez Reed did not say that in the interview we just heard. She said she went outside with Dave Halls and unloaded the revolver. She didn't mention anything about a prop cart. You agree with me on that? I do not, because I do remember her saying something about doing it over a prop cart. Which uh, interview, the first or second we heard? I believe it was the first, and then the second is where she mentioned that she was in two separate places. Okay, and so we're going to try to find that on the first, and if you can find it when we come back and redirect them, I, I want to hear it. So if you find that timestamp. Now, you also said that you did not meet Seth Kenny until October 27th, until the search of the prop truck, correct? Uh, I believe that was the first time that I had met him in person. Okay, well, you said the word, you, the, your first interaction with Seth Kenny was October 27th for the search of the prop truck. Do you recall that? No, I said the first time in person. Okay. And in fact, you had had a prior um, telephone call with him, correct? Yes. And that was on the day of the shooting. Uh, I think I actually had a, probably a couple phone calls with him before. On that day on the 21st? Uh, just in between, <clears throat> sorry, in between um, the day of the incident and then to the search of the prop truck. Okay, and we're going to talk about the day of the incident, the call that you all made to Troy Teske. Do you recall that? On the day of the incident? Yes. I don't recall a phone call on the day of the incident to him. Okay. Not that afternoon, around 4 p.m.? To, to a Troy? Troy Teske? No. Okay. I don't recall. I'm sorry. Okay. And you also said that, that Ms. Gutierrez-Reed saw said she saw Sarah collecting guns. Recall that? Uh, yes. And again, um, I'd like to see if you could point that out, where that is in the interview, because didn't she say instead that Sarah took stuff from the prop cart? And she may have took a gun. She never saw. She said she saw her. Uh, I think the phrase that she used was that she saw Sarah collect the guns. And then later on in that interview, she um, kind of changed her answer. Okay, and the, the jury will be able to hear that too, but I'd like to know where that is on the, if you know. I can't point time stamps out to you, Mr. Bowles. Okay. Now, you are the case agent in this case, correct? I was not at first, but a couple weeks in, yes, I was. And so for two years, you've been the case agent, correct? Yes. Now, if you can tell the jury, that means that you are basically the lead agent on the case. Is that right? Yes. And you collect all the information, you do all the investigation, you read all the reports. Is that right? Um, a majority of it, yes. Um, and then because this case was rather large um, we had some I had assistance from other detectives um, and the district attorney's office so as part of that you collect various sources and maybe people are helping you but you're ultimately the ultimate uh, person with all the information in the case is that right um, with what's uh, pertinent I would say so yes okay but considering how many people were involved um, and how dynamic and everything this case was, um, it is kind of not essentially feasible for me to know every single piece of information. That's why people helped. Sure. And let's start with the first interview and the, the day of the shooting. Now, you recall from your direct and from the videos we saw that you actually walked Miss Gutierrez Reed to the bathroom? Yes. And you were walking her to the bathroom from when she had been detained in Mr. Benavidez's car, correct? Uh, incorrect, because she was not detained at that point. Okay, we, legality, a legal word, but she was sitting in Mr. Benavidez's car, correct? Yes. Now, while she was sitting in Mr. Benavidez's car, you knew as case agent what had happened that day was Mr. Baldwin had been allowed to walk around and talk to people. I do not know um, anything that had happened with him or where he was prior. Well, do you know, as we sit here today, the case agent, having reviewed the pictures of 
Mr. Baldwin on the cell phone? Do you are you telling the jury you don't know he was out talking to people? Oh, I'd say he was he was out, but at the time that I was there, no. I'm talking about your knowledge today. Do you know today that Mr. Baldwin was not put in a police car like Ms. Gutierrez Reed? That's correct. Okay. And you know today that Mr. Baldwin, there's a picture of him on his cell phone talking to somebody on the day of the shooting? Yes. Okay. And you know that there is a video of him talking with David Halls and some other people in a, in a, on a truck area? I'm sorry, you said a video with him talking with... To, to David Halls? I, I don't know of that video. Okay. In any event, um, she's, she's in Mr. Benavidez's car, and you're walking Ms. Gutierrez Reed to the bathroom. Yes, sir. And, ma'am, we saw that you went inside the bathroom with Ms. Gutierrez Reed, correct? That is correct. And one of the reasons you did that was you said that you felt like she might, be able, she might harm herself. No, I didn't say that I felt like she was going to. It's just um, typical for us, um, especially because she had requested me to go with her. Um, you know, at, at the end of the day, my concern is, or at, on that day, my concern is her well-being. Um, she was obviously very distraught at that time. I wanted to make sure that she wasn't going to have some sort of medical episode or something happen in the bathroom where um, I would have to step in at that point. Did she actually ask you to come in the bathroom with her? No. Okay. But she went ahead and went in. Yes, and I turned the opposite direction from her to give her privacy. And would you agree with me that she had never met you, that that'd be fairly intrusive to go in, inside the actual bathroom with her? Uh, that would be a question for Ms. Gutierrez. Okay. Now, you felt like you were wanting to make sure she didn't hurt herself, including in the bathroom. And so you, you must have felt like she was very distraught. Yes, I do feel like she was distraught that day. And you also heard her say, did you not, that she, um, this was the worst day of her life, she didn't want to live, words to that effect? Uh, I don't recall hearing her saying anything that she didn't want to live. Or she said, my life is over. Sorry, I misremembered that. Did and, you? And I will object. I believe that is absolutely a misstatement of, of what she said on the video. And if Mr. Bowles needs to review the video, I can pull it up. Do you recall what she, what she said? Uh, verbatim, no, but something to that extent. So, okay. So after knowing that, you all take her back to the station, and we see uh, yourself and, and Talamante sitting around a table, correct? Yes. And Miss Gutierrez Reed is then in the corner um, on the opposite end of that table, correct? Yes. Now, do you remember she mentioned at the start that something about maybe she should talk to a lawyer? Yes. And you all told her that, or not you, but do you remember hearing Talamante tell her that it might be a public defender and it might take all night? Uh, yes, yeah, something to that extent. Okay, so with that, um, that statement was made to her with her asking how long a lawyer would take to get, correct? E, I believe so. Okay, and then do you recall hearing that, that you all told her it was just going to be a few basic questions? Uh, I did not make that statement, you know, no, but I believe Hannah's response was that she was willing to answer a few basic questions. Okay, and with that she signed her um, Miranda waiver. Yes. A waiver of her Miranda rights, is that right? Yes. So you felt it was okay for her to do that even in the distraught state that she was in whereby you thought she might even hurt herself? Possibly. Um, I don't believe I said anything about her wanting to hurt herself. Um, just that obviously we take care of the well-being of people. Okay. And then, uh, I'm sorry, what was the other part of the question? No, that's it. You answered it. Um, now, during this first interview, you did not tell Ms. Gutierrez-Reed that, that Helena had passed, did you? No, I didn't even know that uh, Ms. Hutchins had passed away until essentially right before I told Mr. Baldwin. Okay, so you didn't know that time at that time either. I did not know. Okay, now during the course of that interview, I think you you stayed actually at the end of the second interview that when people have undergone a traumatic event, sometimes they can say um, uh, 
unusual thing. I can't remember the exact words you used. Yeah, something about their um, uh, their perception or um, you know recollection after something like that could you know be I guess misinterpreted in a way. Okay, and and you've seen that in the course of your career as an officer that after somebody undergoes a traumatic event, sometimes their memory is affected? Yes, and that's why we conduct additional interviews. Okay. So it's a fact um, you would agree with that she had just witnessed a very traumatic, uh, she had been through a very traumatic situation. Right. She didn't witness it because she, she wasn't it. inside the church. Right. So she was not inside the church. That's what you concluded based on your investigation? And her statements. Okay. And you were able to corroborate that, that right? Yes. Okay. So um, knowing that, the statement she gave, again, those could have been impacted in some ways by her uh, being a part of a traumatic situation. Theoretically. Now, would you also agree with me that you asked different questions in the second interview than the first interview? Yes, I asked a lot of questions in the second interview. Yeah, it was a lot more comprehensive, correct? That is correct. Okay. Now, you also know that when you take an interview of somebody, um, that you can use that in court against them, correct? Their, I'm sorry, the their interview? Yes. Yes. So while you were doing that, while you were questioning her, and you all were talking to her and looked like kind of being friendly with her, you knew that you could later use that one day in court. Yes. Okay. And um, again, I mean, did she appear during that first interview, right before that first interview, she was in a very distraught state. Um, I would say that when... I'm just going to object to asked and answered. She's already testified to it. That's fine. She has already said that. Okay. Now, in the first interview, Ms. Gutierrez-Reed told you there were three sources of ammunition, correct? In the first interview? Yes. Not correct. Okay. What did she tell you in the first interview? That they came from Seth Kenny. Okay. And then she later tells you, um, the second interview, it's Seth Kenny, Billy Ray, and herself, right? Um, I don't know if she, I don't remember if she identified Billy Ray, but she did list additional sources. Okay. And she also told you that Seth Kenny had given her ammunition for the prior movie set that she was on, The Old Way? Uh, I don't recall her specifically saying that Seth Kenny provided that. And again, you... You don't remember on the, from the first interview a statement that she got ammunition from Seth Kenny? I just said that she did say that she got it from Seth Kenny. Okay. Did you try to corroborate that to pull invoices to show that Seth Kenny had brought ammunition from the uh, to the old way set? Um, not to the old way. Okay. Now there was talk about the idea of sabotage. And you mentioned um, that this came uh, to your attention as part of this investigation, correct? Correct. Do you recall seeing in that first interview that Officer Talamante brings up the idea to Miss Gutierrez Reed that the camera crew walking off, does she think one of them might have done something? She, uh, De Detective Talamante, did present the idea to Miss Gutierrez about the camera crew. And Ms. Gutierrez's response was no, that she didn't think it was them and that she wouldn't want to think that way of anyone. And so that was on October 21st. So the first mention that you're aware of of the possibility of sabotage was your fellow detective, Ms. Talamante, correct? Uh, that I would say is incorrect. Well, where did you hear it before that? Before? The 21st, before... Detective Talamante says that. Who, who said it before that? That was a theory that we threw out to try to get answers, not a theory from someone that was on set. Oh, so when you say we threw out a theory, what do you mean? The sheriff's office. So the sheriff's office created a theory? 
No. Again, we were trying to get answers to questions that we had as to w how or why something like this would potentially happen. So was this a ruse? You're trying to trick people? Is that what you're talking about? You created a theory? What is that what the, what the intent was? No. Okay, well then did you believe this theory? Believe the theory about the camera crew? The sabotage. That you threw out, that the sheriffs made, that the sheriffs put out. Did you believe there was some truth to that? No. Okay, so you put out a false theory. And I'm going to object. She didn't put out a false theory. She didn't say it in the interview. It simply wasn't her. Okay, well then, Talamante put out a false theory. Again, it's it's an interview, so we can discuss things. Um, bring up things to, again, try to get questions answered and figure out how to or where to go with our investigation. Okay, and trying to get answers from people through uh, a, a false idea. Um, did you ever actually investigate the camera crew? Did you interview any of them? I did not interview them, no. Did anybody in your team interview any of them? I believe Detective Joel Cano did. How many of them did he interview? That would be a question for Detective Joel Cano. Okay, and you as the case agent don't know that? No. And, and you don't know what the result of those interviews are? I would have to read his reports. Okay. And, and also on that idea, um, you brought up the idea of Starline Brass in the second interview and that these were um, look, appeared to be reloads because Starline Brass doesn't make live ammunition. Do you recall that part of the interview? Yes. Now you heard the uh, prosecutor, uh, special prosecutor's expert, Mr. Haig. He talked about those um, rounds appearing more to be reloads, the live rounds. Did you hear that testimony? Yes, I did. And do you agree with, with him that to you or that those appear to be reloads? Well, it's so far outside the scope of what she could testify to. She's not an expert in ammunition. That's why we called Mr. Haig. And, okay, I'm not, I'll ask you another question. Do you have any reason to doubt Mr. Haig that he's correct? That's his. Well, I'll, 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 go ahead. Based on your investigation as a case agent and everything that you reviewed in this case, do you have any information to dispute your own expert, Mr. Haig? No. So if those are reloads, um, and you know what JS means, Joe Swanson, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so you had known from talking to Thel Reed that Thel Reed had delivered live ammunition to Seth Kenny on the set of 1883, correct? Uh, from his statement, yes. Yes, and you knew that you had talked to Troy Teske and that he had first... Um, been holding these and giving them to Thel Reed, correct? Correct. Now, did you investigate the idea further, given that these were reloads, to try to figure out the source of the reloads? No, because really what's important to law enforcement were the circumstances of what occurred that day and the facts and the evidence of what occurred during the incident. Okay, well then, Ms. Morrissey asked you earlier if you had any information as to Seth Kenny bringing live rounds on set, but what you just said is you were more focused on the events of the day, is that correct? That was our main focus, yes. So is it fair to say, would you agree with me, that you didn't fully investigate the circumstances of these reloads? I would say that we investigated it. But you did not fully investigate it because you were more focused on the events of the actual day, is that fair to say? Yes. Now, you also talked about earlier that um, it was kind of a circumstantial theory about Miss Gutierrez Reed, but you have no direct evidence that you can tell the jury today that she brought live rounds to set. That's correct. Okay. I remember you had told me at one point um, that when you interviewed Sarah Zachary, she gave conflicting information. Do you Is that true? Um. I don't recall my conversation with you. Um, I can say that I did not conduct Sarah's um, initial interview, but I know it was fairly short and I did a more in-depth one with her later. 
Did you find in the course of those interviews, the one you did, her statements to be conflicting? I believe that they were. Okay. In the course of your investigation, did you also um, conclude that Seth Kenny had wanted uh, Ms. Gutierrez-Reed fired? Um, I would disagree with him wanting her fired. I believe the conversation that I had seen was that Sarah had the um, ability to fire her because um, essentially the, she wasn't pulling her, her weight. Well, did you ever um, corroborate and try to investigate that uh, with the statements of uh, Troy Teske and Sarah Zachary? Corroborate. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just confused what, about the question if you could. Okay, sure, I'll reword it. Um, did you interview or talk to both Sarah Zachary and Troy Teske? Did they give you information about whether Seth Kenny wanted her fired? Uh, I, I don't recall. Okay. Now, you would agree with me, would you not, that Ms. Gutierrez-Reed was cooperative with you in terms of sitting down for interviews? Yes. And she was also cooperative in um, uh, providing her phone? Yes. Okay. So you didn't have to do a, a search warrant for that? No, I didn't have to on anyone's, essentially, besides Alec Baldwin's. Okay. Yeah. Um, Alec Baldwin had to have a search warrant, had to go through New York, and that, that whole process, is that what happened? That's correct. Okay. Now, as part of your investigation, you concluded uh, not only that Hannah was not in the church at the time, but that she had handed the weapon to Mr. Halls? Yes. And did you also conclude that, that Mr. Halls had handed that to Mr. Baldwin? Yes. And we're, I just want to specify this is before the incident. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I should have given you a time frame. Thank so, you. So, yes, you're right. That's right before, that's right after lunch and right before the shooting is what I'm talking about. Okay. And so in that time frame, um, did you conclude based on all your investigation? So by statements, that is what I concluded. However, there were opposing statements at the beginning of the investigation. Okay, there were conflicting statements at the beginning? Yes. Mm -hmm. Did you determine that those were not correct, those conflicting statements? Um, they were... I guess I'm, I'm going to object because I don't know specifically what statement he's referring oh, to. Oh, sure. I'll, I'll ask you. Okay. okay. I'll ask the witness. Yes, Your Honor. Corporal, what statements were conflicting with that idea? Um, so, on the... The day of the incident, I did interview Mr. Baldwin, and in his interview, um, he initially had stated that Hannah handed him the gun. However, later he changed that statement and said that Dave Halls had been the one that handed him the gun. And I, I just would ask the court for some kind of an instruction or guidance with regard to this sounds like hearsay. Um, so if it's not being offered for that, then can we kind of iron that out? Sure, and counsel uh, asked to know those statements. But, counsel um, what? Asked to know what those statements well, were. that doesn't mean that she opened the door for hearsay. No, and I understand, Your Honor. And I'm just, based on um, her knowledge of these, the effect on her and what she did investigation-wise. Well, so, sorry, ask it that way. Yes. So, and I'm, I'm not trying to get into uh, the core of the statements unless people want to hear it, uh, but I do want to ask you what certain things had uh, impact on you and your investigation. So that's why I asked that. How did you reconcile, and when you got those conflicting statements, uh, what did you do to make your ultimate conclusion? Did you review additional information, talk to more people, what did you do? Yeah, so that was, I mean, essentially the purpose of re-interviewing and gathering um, people's statements. Okay. Did you also learn and conclude that the Ms. Gutierrez Reed, when she handed Halls the, the weapon, had um, shown him the rounds? 
Um, her statement was that she uh, showed him what was in the cylinder, not that she took the realms out. Okay, and you also heard her say that, that before she put in the last round, that she had shaken it in her statement. Do you remember hearing that? Yes. Okay. Now you, as part of your investigation, you also uh, were aware that numerous people had access to that prop truck? Um, yes. And that was because in the day it was not secured? I wasn't on set, so I can't okay. call that, but, but that was you, my understanding. That's what you, your understanding was. Yes. And um, did you learn in the course of your investigation, your understanding, that it took props a while to get a cart, a prop cart, to use for their weapons? Uh, I believe it took a, a few days for them. Okay. Were you aware whether Ms. Gutierrez-Reed had to pull a wagon before that? No. Okay. You never heard that she had a wagon? Uh, no. Objection okay. asked and answered. Okay. Okay. You knew as part of your investigation that uh, Ms. Gutierrez-Reed was uh, performing two jobs and had to support props, correct? That's correct. Okay. And she also made statements that she had requested additional training with Gabrielle Pickle. Do you recall that? Yes. Okay. Did you also, in the course of your investigation, conclude that there was a lot of rushing on the set? Um, from statements provided to me, yes. Did you also learn that whether uh, safety meetings had occurred every day on set? Um, from the interviews that I conducted, it um, seemed pretty apparent that they were not conducted every day. Okay. Was it also apparent to you that the safety bulletins, like for the industry, were not attached to the call sheets? That's correct. Did you ever find any uh, inventory procedure or anything that Rust Productions had put together for the ammunition that was coming in? No. Did you find any inventory procedure in the call sheets or otherwise in production regarding the firearms? No. There was a gun safe on the prop truck, correct? That's correct. And was that uh, that safe, who had access to that, that safe? It would have been um, Ms. Gutierrez and Sarah Zachary, and it was a little unclear about Nicole. Okay, and Nicole, again, for the jury, she was the props uh, assistant? Yes. Okay. At, at or before the search of the prop truck that we talked about earlier, did Seth Kenny obtain the code to that safe? Yes. Because okay. he was the one that let you all in on the 27th into the prop truck, correct? That's correct. Okay. In the course of your investigation... Well, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm going to back up. Yeah. He did not... Did you say the prop truck or the safe? The safe. I'm sorry. I, I misspoke. It okay. was the safe, I meant. Yeah. He did not let us into the prop truck, um, but he did let us into the safe. Okay. And... Um, Prior to that search on the 27th, between the, the time of the incident on the 21st and then the 27th, there was at least a few days in there where that prop truck was not secure, correct? I wasn't on scene, so I cannot say definitively. Well, do you know as case agent that sheriffs were stationed there the entire time? Uh, they were not stationed there the whole time, but I know they were there at least for a couple days um, before I obtained the search warrant. Okay, so at least from your knowledge as case agent, law enforcement was not present at that prop truck for at least a couple of days. Uh, yes, correct. I want to talk to you a little bit about um, the search of the prop truck on the date of the 27th and then the search of PDQ props. What date did that occur on, the search of PDQ props? November 30th, okay. 2021. So November 30th, 2021, that was approximately a month and 10 days after the incident. Is that correct? 
Yes. Okay. Um, should, and I might be off a day if I'm, I am as close. It's about a month and 10 days, right? Okay. Yes. Okay. Now, during that time frame, um, from reviewing phone records, did you have a call with Seth Kenny on October 25th that lasted about 20 minutes? Uh, I Probably. Do you recall that call, which would have been two days before the search of the prop truck? I, I don't. Between the time of the search of PDQ props and the shooting incident, that month and 10 days, you remember how many calls you had with Seth Kenny? No, there were a bit. There was a lot, wasn't there? He would call you quite a bit? Yes. And uh, isn't it true that he would try to give you information and try to steer you in certain ways? Um, I don't believe he was trying to steer me in any way. I think that he was trying to be um, helpful in locating the source of the live ammunition. Didn't he, didn't he push this on to Ms. Gutierrez-Reed? Push. Didn't he indicate that Ms. Gutierrez-Reed must be the source of the live ammunition? He probably, I mean, he may have said something to that extent. And in fact, um, <laughs> have you seen messages in the course of your investigation where he's imp trying to implicate Ms. Gutierrez-Reed? Uh, are you referring to text messages yes. in between them two? Between uh, them two, between Sarah Zachary, regarding the letters from Old Way. Didn't you remember seeing those? Yeah, there were text messages about that. Okay. So you would agree with me, would you not, that Seth Kenny is calling you a lot. He's trying to implicate Ms. Gutierrez-Reed, whether that's by providing information what he's doing. But that's what he's doing, isn't he? I can't make that assumption. Miss uh, Zachary worked for Seth Kenny, PDQ Props? Uh, yes, I believe she was licensed under them. And you know that right after the shooting, uh, Miss Zachary and Ms., Mr. Kenny had text and a phone call, correct? Yes. And you remember that there was words to the effect that there had been a shooting? Uh, I believe the text message said emergency. Emergency. Um, do you know what they discussed? Yes, we're back to hearsay, and so I want to make a hearsay objection. I can't figure out what the exception would be to this. And again, Your Honor, I'll word it in terms of her course of her investigation and the effect, and it's not for the truth. I'm just trying to find out. Well, let's see if, it's, if it has, let's see if it meets effect on listener. I haven't okay. heard that yet. I, I guess my concern is, is that what's going to happen here is Mr. Bowles is just going to get a bunch of hearsay out, the jury's going to hear it, and then maybe it doesn't have an effect on the listener, and then hearsay's just out, and then we've just broken the rules of evidence. So is there a way we can do this so that Mr. Bowles doesn't get to spend the next why half an hour? Why don't you just ask her if any text message between the two of them, um, what, if anything, it had on the effect of the investigation? Yes, I was going to ask you that, and we are going to have Sarah Zachary as a witness, so... Uh, we're not going to, um, but the, um, after the phone call and, and text occurred, um, did you learn and did you investigate whether rounds had been thrown away on the set, on the scene? I received a statement of that. Okay, that, that rounds had been thrown away um, on the, the Sorry, counsel. Corporal, did you investigate uh, whether rounds were thrown away? Again, that was a statement in an interview. 
And I'm not asking about the statement. I'm asking if you investigated that at all. I'm not really sure how to, if you want to reword it a different way. Sure. Did you try to locate rounds <clears throat> that, that were thrown away? Over, over a month later? I'm just asking the question if you tried no. to do that. Okay. That statement was given over a month later. And, and likewise, the search of PDQ props was over a month after the shooting incident, correct? Correct. And so there would have been time for Mr. Kenny, had he wanted to, to get rid of evidence if he had wanted to. Is that a fair statement? If he had wanted to. Did you also investigate whether um, items had been taken from the prop cart to the prop truck after the shooting? Because Ms. Uh, Gutierrez-Reed made that statement. Yeah. And, and Mr. Bowles, what can you just tell her what statement you're referring to? I think this is not hearsay, so I think Ms. Gutierrez's well, statement's why, why coming in. just ask if she did that without the added part of sure. it's necessary? I yes. Know. And I just was trying to ask her that if you investigated whether items had been taken from the prop cart to the prop truck. Um, Can you give a time period? Yes, right after the shooting, before law enforcement got there. Uh, so during the investigation, um, it was relayed to me that there had been uh, firearms that were secured back in the prop truck. And did you, and my question was, did you investigate to determine whether that was correct? I'm not really, I mean, I'd say it was given, it was a statement given to okay. me and we had done a search on the prop trunk. Okay. Were, so, were you able to corroborate that? Well, I don't know exactly what guns mm -hmm. were identified to which actor. Um, so I can't really say. Okay, so you didn't, you didn't. I would say that we followed up on it. Okay. <clears throat> you also saw on the video where a man at the scene had reached across the crime scene tape. Do you recall that video? Yes. Do you recall um, seeing his hand that it was kind of like this and he put it down on the, the cart over the tape? Do you recall seeing that? Uh, I recall seeing him grab something off the cart and then putting it back. Do you recall seeing his, <clears throat> his hand being behind his back and coming around sort of shaped like this and then go over the tape onto the cart? No. You don't recall seeing and, Your Honor, this is Mr. Bowles testifying. Mr. Bowles is testifying because he didn't get the right information from the right. Move on. Uh, yeah, I will. Um, you don't know whether he put something on the cart or whether he took something off. Do you? And I will object to foundation because this witness wasn't there. That's why I asked her if she didn't know. That's why I said you don't know. All right, so she's already said that she didn't. She doesn't know, so let's move on. Okay. Now, I want to ask you about more about Seth Kenny. You never took his um, fingerprints, correct? Correct. And you never took his DNA, correct? That's correct. And you also never took his uh, phone to be downloaded like the other phones that you took, right? That's correct. So, um, Mr. Kenny, I know you mentioned had shown you certain text messages and other information, but you never got the entirety of what was on his phone, correct? Uh, it wasn't a, a full extraction, if that's what you're referring to. Yes, right. It was not a full extraction. That's correct. And um, in contrast, you got extractions of phones for Ms. Gutierrez-Reed, Sarah Zachary, Mr. Halls, and Mr. Baldwin, correct? Yes, because they were on the set. Okay, and, and you had mentioned that before, but actually Seth Kenny was the primary um, source of ammunition to the set. I will object right? to the form of that question. It is completely contrary to the evidence that the jury has heard, and Mr. Bowles knows it. Uh, I, actually, Your Honor, I don't. And I'm asking her a question that's perfectly permissible to ask her. If she disagrees. Okay, I ask the question. Okay, I, look, my question to you is Were you aware that Seth Kinney was the primary ammunition supplier to the set? Uh, I wouldn't. 
I don't know if I would say primary, but he was a source of ammunition. Okay, he was a source of ammunition to the set. And knowing that, isn't it true that it would be possible for his fingerprints to be on the boxes or ammunition he supply? It could be possible. And in fact, you, you submitted for um, potential fingerprints those four blank rounds that we saw earlier to the FBI, right? Yes. Um, but you did not send any of the live rounds for fingerprint testing. I think that was discussed with the FBI. Why? And I understand that, but why would it be different in your understanding to send the blanks versus the live rounds? I'm sorry, the blanks? The blanks you sent for fingerprint testing, why were they different and why could you not have sent the live round? Why is there a difference? Do you mean the cartridges? The cartridges. Okay, those I'm aren't sorry. blanks. I'm not blanks, I'm sorry. The cartridges you sent, um, you're right, already fired cartridges that you sent. Why is that different than the live rounds? That, that test was not requested by us. The test, which For test? those cartridges? For which cartridges? The f you're talking about the four casings. Yes. Right? Yes. Yes. So that test came from Ms. or the request for it came from Ms. Morrissey. Okay, so the, the special prosecutor decided that she was going to try to test the cartridges for the fingerprints, is that right? Yes. So given that, um, I'm just trying to figure out why the live rounds couldn't have also been tested. I had that discussion with you several times, I believe, right? We did. We talked about it. And yes. I, still don't, I just still wanted to ask you why those weren't submitted because isn't, wouldn't it have been possible? I think you heard testimony from the FBI that, it, that they wouldn't. There was a, I don't think they said they wouldn't. I think they said a very low percentage. Correct. So that, again, I had this discussion with the district attorney's office, with our crime scene technician, um, along with our FBI Albuquerque representative. And I believe we took it back to the lab rep representatives as well as to DNA, um, DNA and latent print testing on the live ammunition that we had found on set. So the reason why we did not proceed, which I had discussed with you, um, as to why we did not do that testing was because there were several statements throughout my interviews and, um, and investigation in general that these live rounds had already been um, touched, handled. This wasn't day one of filming. I believe this was day 12. So um, we had already had statements that these rounds, um, one, may have came from other movie sets, which were the ones in the bandoliers. Um, the ones in the box had been handled by Sarah Zachary, um, along with you know, the ones that were in the weapon handled by Hannah and Dave. And there's just a lot of handling of those rounds um, that they, to, to us and the discussions that we had had, it didn't make sense for us to do testing on those when we already knew that there were numerous people handling them. Um, it didn't make sense, which I discussed that with you. And I also referred if you had any issues with that going further to discuss it with the district attorney's office. And you had no idea when those rounds appeared on set. You don't have any direct evidence of that. Of when they did? Yes. No. So you, you have no idea if they appeared on day one or day 11? Correct. So given that, the statement you just made about all this handling, you really don't know that, do you? Because you don't know when they came on the set. Again, there's a lot of people handling that stuff on set. Well, if they, from if, if they appeared on the day in question, if that box had just appeared, um, then you have no idea how many people handled those, do you? If, if that box had just appeared. Yes, right. If. Right, you don't know. Right. Okay. And so, um, 
you also heard Ms. Gutierrez Reed state that that they would frequently use uh, dummies and then they would mix them out with other boxes and I asked Popple that did, did you hear that testimony uh, yes and so you don't know one way or another because you just saw the boxes as they were in the 21st whether those were the same rounds in the same box on the 18th for example that's correct okay. and you wouldn't know if they had used them before and then changed them out in a different box correct if who are you referring to uh, Miss Zachary and Miss Gutierrez Reed if they use them in the course of a day you don't know which box they would have put them in that's correct okay um, when you went to Mr. Kenny's business to search, that was pursuant to search warrant again, correct? Yes. And so a, a judge again signed a search warrant on probable cause to search that business, correct? Yes. And you were looking for certain evidence of live rounds, is that right? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Um, did you take a uh, series of photos at that search warrant? Did I? know? Okay, Ms. Popple did? Yes. But you were present to see the various things that were there and that were being photographed. Yes. Um, there was a picture that I want to show you in a moment of a box of, of ammo that had a steel wool in that picture. Do you recall that? I do not. I'm sorry. Okay. I want to show that to you. So... I do have an objection. This photo is not in evidence, and I don't know that the photo can come into evidence through this witness. Would you like to approach, or? I want to see what he's going to do. All right. Yeah. And Kelsey, you had mentioned this was coming in. So this picture is the one that we talked about. No, no. I told you the other picture from Mr. Kenny was coming in during his testimony. That is a photo that you should have gotten in through Ms. Popple, and you can call her back if you want to. Well, if you want to, I'm going to ask her if she recognizes it. If I may approach her. Do you recall, ma'am, if you can look at this photo? Yeah. Let's see if you recognize that box. I, I couldn't say for certain. So you don't remember? Seeing this particular box and the steel wool and the rounds in here, you don't remember this from the search? Your Honor asked and answered. She's already said. Sustained. Okay, we'll, we'll call Officer Popple back. Um, let me ask you this. How many times have you prepped your testimony with Ms. Morrissey? A few. How many times have you met with her? How many days? I couldn't say an exact number. Was it two? Is it three? Again, I couldn't say an exact number. So you don't know how many days you've met to prepare? An exact number? No, no. and I don't want to just assume. Okay. Have you talked to her on the phone about it? Yes. Did you go over the questions she was going to ask you and your answers? Yes. So, in essence, you practiced for today, right? Yes. So... Your testimony that you, you've gone over these exhibits, you've gone over what you're going to say today. That's correct. So when you gave those answers earlier, um, in fact, you you knew what a particular exhibit number was. It was 48. That was something you all had discussed, wasn't it? Uh, I don't believe the specific exhibit number, um, but again, she showed me when she would ask about it. On a break? just now when she right, yes. would ask about it. I'm sorry, I, I don't know off the top of my head what Exhibit 48 is, and I don't know that the witness does. So um, in order for this to make sense... She, did her, she, did, she didn't ask for clarification. All I right. think we're just going over this. Well, I, if he's okay. mentioning me, I don't know what he's talking okay. about. Thank well, I, she does, because she was the one that prepped you, right? Bomb. Yes, I will, Your Honor. Did Miss Morrissey prep you, or was it somebody else? Uh, yes, she did. So, so she was there talking to you, right? Or, or on the phone or in person? She was the one talking to you. Correct? Yes, it's pretty normal to prep with a with the attorney you're working with for a trial. Did you help prep other witnesses in this case with Miss Morrissey? Were you present? No. Okay. As a case agent, I'm not accusing you of anything. I'm just wondering if you were present during other interviews. Asked and what? answered. She already said no. Move on. 
Now, um, Mr. Baldwin, I want to talk about him. You and Mr. Baldwin had two phone calls that you recorded. you recall that? Yes. And did you have uh, other phone calls that were not recorded? There, there may have been. Would that be unusual for in your standard operating procedures to have a call with a suspect that you do not record? Um, so it was, again, it was a phone call, so no, we're not really required to um, use lapels to record phone calls. Okay, would that, is that true though when you have a suspect in a shooting case, he's the one accused of shooting, if that person calls you, you're saying you don't have to record that? By policy, no. Um, I've had numerous phone calls where I potentially didn't have a lapel near me, um, they take time to turn on, um, so it's, it's possible. There were probably other phone calls in this case that weren't recorded as well. Do you remember the substance of the unrecorded phone calls? Can you point them out? I don't. <laughs> it, we, we don't. I don't know because we don't have them recorded. I'm just wondering if you can remember any of the substance. No. So, in the recorded phone calls, do you recall um, a call of 13 minutes with Mr. Baldwin? approximately in which he was driving to Vermont? I, I'm sure that there was one. Okay. And you recall that, that he oh, was... Come over here. Okay. 